Hello friends. Hi, I'm Dr. Shonali Chandra. Now in the previous video, I had discussed with you what are the changes in thyroid hormone physiology during pregnancy. So if you've not seen that video, please watch it and then come and watch this video on hypothyroidism in pregnancy. So yes, there is an increasing requirement of thyroid hormone during pregnancy. Thyroid hormone production increases during pregnancy. But yes, if the uh, thyroid gland for some reason is not able to meet the increasing requirements during pregnancy, it will lead to hypothyroidism and goiter. So yes, for people who are iodine deficient or for people who themselves may not be clinically hypothyroid at that moment but have autoantibodies directed against the thyroid gland may go on to develop thyroiditis during pregnancy or the third situation can be that there is a known woman with hypothyroidism and she goes and becomes pregnant right so the most common cause of hypothyroidism in pregnancy is autoimmune thyroiditis right and yes in iodine deficient areas uh, this remains an important cause of hypothyroidism in pregnancy. Now, what are the risks of hypothyroidism during pregnancy? Now, there is increased risk of miscarriage, preeclampsia, fetal growth restriction, low birth weight, preterm delivery, fetal distress, and as well as impaired fetal brain development. So remember I told you that for the first 12 weeks of uh, intrauterine life, for first 12 weeks of gestation, the fetus is exclusively dependent on maternal thyroid hormones, right? And that is a crucial period because that is the time when organogenesis and brain development is happening. If this condition continues throughout the remainder of the pregnancy as well, then there can be deficits in intelligence in the child also right now these risks are seen both with subclinical as well as overt hypothyroidism in pregnancy now yes of course the risks of these complications are going to be more if there is overt clinically hypothyroid woman during pregnancy especially if she goes untreated especially if the levels are not controlled so yes having said that would it then be a good idea to screen all pregnant women during pregnancy so that we may even be able to identify subclinical hypothyroidism would it then be a good idea to treat all women who have subclinical hypothyroidism during pregnancy now these are questions which have not got any clear yes or no answer but there are consensus recommendations and guidelines so as of now no international guideline recommends screening all pregnant women uh, or there is no consensus on having a universal screening for uh, hypothyroidism during pregnancy. So what we have instead is a risk based or let's say a population based screening. That means that those women who belong to a population where even the general prevalence of hypothyroidism is higher, those are the women we should definitely screen. Like for example, in North India here, we do have a general prevalence of hypothyroidism and therefore in here, we do screen pregnant women with the serum TSH value. Like for example, if the woman is elderly, if the woman is beyond the age of 35 it's a good idea to screen if there has been a history of prior infertility if there has been a history of prior autoimmune disorders right it is a good idea to screen that set of women so yes population based or risk based screen is what is being recommended so one has to see if in your area if in your area of practice this is included in the screening or not now the other question is about treatment of hypothyroidism in pregnancy. So the treatment is the same, right? The hormone replacement has to be given which is levothyroxine. Now the question is which are the women who deserve treatment? So of course women who have overt hypothyroidism 
right that means they have low free t4 values and high tsh values those are overt hypothyroid patients they definitely need treatment there is a very big controversy about whether or not to treat subclinical hypothyroidism in pregnancy so yes consensus guidelines regarding subclinical hypothyroidism now that would be free t4 normal but tsh elevated now these women are otherwise asymptomatic mind you but they're still at increased risk of complications so the consensus guideline says that if the serum tsh is more than 10 miu per liter it is better to treat this is a consensus guideline it may be different in different parts of the world and yes if the serum tsh is elevated plus anti-tpo antibodies are present right so these are the anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies suggestive of underlying autoimmune thyroiditis so she may be subclinical but she has elevated anti-tpo antibodies it is a good idea to treat so yes these are certain consensus guidelines which are there that's because these are the set of women who are anyways right now subclinical but during the course of pregnancy they be may become frankly hypo or overtly or clinically hypothyroid now the next question that arises is that what if a woman is a known hypothyroid and she's already on levothyroxine supplements right then the dose needs to be increased in pregnancy because the requirement for thyroid hormone is increasing in pregnancy you know beginning from as early as the fifth week of gestation so as soon as she gets pregnant and she comes to know the dose should be increased and one should begin by increasing the dose by about 25 to 30 percent or whatever she was taking pre-pregnancy but this dose needs to be titrated there on after throughout the rest of the pregnancy so six weekly serum tsh values are checked and then you know one can titrate the dose according to the serum tsh levels now after delivery what will happen is her requirement for thyroid hormone is going to come back okay it's going to fall down so after delivery we should lower the dosage to whatever was the pre-pregnancy dose right but it is still very important it is still very important to keep monitoring the serum tsh values in the postpartum period as well because these women who are overtly hypothyroid or who are even subclinically hypothyroid especially the ones especially the ones with anti tpo antibodies right these are the ones especially these ones who are at increased risk of having postpartum thyroiditis and the risk is maximum or most commonly in the first three months after postpartum so it is a good idea to check the serum tsh levels at three months after delivery and then another at six months after delivery now let's talk a little bit more about postpartum thyroiditis right so in this situation there is postpartum inflammation and destruction of the thyroid gland right so yes of course women who have autoantibodies directed against thyroid gland specific proteins in the circulation like an example i gave you of anti tpo antibodies now they may be subclinically hypothyroid right or they may have a prior personal or family history of having autoimmune thyroiditis maybe a prior personal or family history of having other autoimmune antibody mediated diseases history of um, insulin dependent diabetes mellitus now these are the set of women who are at increased risk of developing postpartum thyroiditis now in the initial phase what happens is that there is inflammation and destruction of the gland so this is the colloid where hormones are stored right thyroid hormones are stored so these hormones are released into the systemic circulation leading to transient hyperthyroidism which lasts for about one to two months 
Now, as and when the hormone stores are completely depleted, released into the systemic circulation and depleted, eventually hypothyroidism is going to set in and this stage lasts for about 4 to 8 months right now it is very important to keep in mind that women in this phase of transient hyperthyroidism they can have symptoms very frankly evident of hyperthyroidism or they simply may complain of fatigue and palpitations right now please remember here that during this phase uh, the cause is because of release of hormones into the circulation not because the production of hormones is getting affected here all right so please remember that drugs like antithyroid drugs these are the drugs that act to decrease thyroid hormone glandular production so if we give antithyroid drugs to treat hyperthyroidism here it will not work all right because the cause is that the hormones are released from the storage right so antithyroid drugs here are not effective uh, if you want to give symptom control like if the woman is complaining of palpitations and tachycardia you want to bring the heart rate down then symptomatic treatment with beta blockers like propranolol is often used at this point in time now if you look at hypothyroidism yes for the symptoms here she can be frankly symptomatic with clearly evident symptoms or she may only complain of anxiety and depression and many times the diagnosis may be missed because we're not thinking about postpartum thyroiditis especially in the high risk women and to treat the symptoms here, thyroid hormone replacement will be required and can be given. But please remember here that for most of the women who undergo postpartum thyroiditis, the hormone levels will come back to normal eventually, right? However, there will be a set of women for whom the hormone levels may not come back to be normal. There may also be a set of women who will go on to become permanently hypothyroid uh, in about 5 to 10 years, about 20 20% women become permanently hypothyroid who've gone through postpartum thyroiditis. So yes, women who have undergone postpartum thyroiditis, one should have annual screening of serum TSH levels. Keep that in mind also. Okay, so this is about hypothyroidism in pregnancy and in the next video, I will talk about hyperthyroidism in pregnancy.